perfect moment That golden moment I know you feel it so Hello everyone, what's up? It's been a while. Been pretty busy out there recently in the real world. Now that I have time to finally do a video, I sit there thinking to myself, realizing I don't really have anything I want to talk about at the minute. And I look at the current state of YouTube and discussions of whether the ethno state are possible just don't fucking interest me. So I decided to update myself on a little case I've done a couple of videos on so far. It's been a while since I looked into the case, and I wanted to see what was going on. For those of you that recall, I've made two videos on this subject. The Karina Vetrano killing. The young sexy jogger from Queens who was killed on a jog one night about a year and a half ago. The first video basically went through the details of the case and what had happened to Karina. The second video came out when they arrested the suspect in the killing. And it had more to do with Sean King's race-baiting piece that he made about it. He wrote an article in the Daily News about how the whole case is racist and all this bullshit. What's funny is, throughout those videos, there are comments in my comment section from people saying the killer was framed, they're just trying to frame this black kid because he's black, all these crazy things. And I've seen other videos linked to my video that were about the same thing, like conspiracy theories about how this kid didn't kill her, even though he confessed. So now I'm glad to say that this update, it's a, from a couple of months ago, this article, back in November. I guess there's no new info on the case since. But it's basically about the killer detailing the final moments of her life. So I figured we'd get into it and keep you guys updated on the case. And hopefully when the conviction comes down, I'll put a video out on that too. And then there'll finally be closure. So I guess let's get into it. Man accused of killing jogger details final moments of torture. The family of Queen's jogger Karina Vetrano broke down in court Monday as they for the first time watched her accused killer detail to cops the tortured final minutes of their daughter's life. Kathy Vetrano let out an anguished moan in between sobs as she heard Chanel Lewis calmly confess to the brutal August 2016 beating in which he broke her daughter's teeth and kept beating her until she lost consciousness before strangling her. At one point, the mom brought the foot-long golden crucifix she routinely totes to court to her face, watching the footage through tears. Her sister Tana Vitrano sat frozen, her teeth bared at Lewis as she cried. I was mad. I saw red. The accused killer tells cops in the video which was playing during the pre-trial hearing Monday to determine whether it'll be deemed admissible evidence. Lewis says he grabbed Vetrano as she ran past him through the marshy swamp, adding she clawed at his face as he hit her five times before she was knocked unconscious. She didn't yell. She was finished. I finished her off. I strangled her. She fell into the puddle and drowned, he says coolly in the footage. I got up and wiped off the blood, and she was calm. She was in the pool. It was like all the way over her face, he says of the puddle, gesturing across his own face. Incredibly, after telling cops how he finished her off, the 21-year-old seemed to think he could pay his way out of murder charges. I can straighten out my stuff? Lewis asked the befuddled prosecutor after he spills his guts during the February 2017 interview. Well, you're a DA, right? Where do we go from here? Is there a restitution program or something? Before confessing, he told Detective Barry Brown, I want to change my life. I'm sorry for what I did. Now, this kid seems pretty off kilter. There's probably something somewhat mentally wrong with him. He may have a bit of autism. I'm not really sure. But I remember in the last video I did, they also said that he had a bad temper and was mad about women. So there's a couple of things wrong with this guy. But he doesn't seem all too there. Like just that statement like, oh, can I change my life? How do I get out of this? Basically, he's saying someone normal would not be thinking that because they know it's not going to really be possible. I mean, unless they have something wrong with their mental faculties and they just don't understand the difference between right and wrong. But he insisted he didn't molest her, even though her jogging shorts had been pulled down. I didn't do any of the stuff they said, sexual assault and stuff like that, he told the cops according to the tape. Well, I don't know if there's any evidence of that. Apparently her shorts were pulled down, but I don't think there's any 
evidence, DNA evidence in the rape kit. I'm pretty sure they got the DNA off of her phone, so he's probably not lying there. But I don't really know if they actually claimed he raped her and sexually assaulted her. I Those are just rumors I've heard, and I've never seen anything official from, you know, any news source or the courts or anything, so I guess he's good there. He said he walked home up the bike path, shaken up, hoping to get napkins to stop the bleeding from the scratches she left on his face. When asked why he attacked the jogger, Lewis confusingly responded that he killed Vetrano because a guy moved into my house and the neighborhood. Her father, Philip Vetrano, said he was feeling a lot of anger and lashed into Lewis' relatives before he and his family left court in an unmarked police car. His family left the room, he said brusquely. They couldn't listen to his confession. We know where the coward got his cowardliness from. The truth hurts, he added. It's pathetic. It's just so tomorrow they can say their offspring is not guilty. Lewis's family ignored questions. So those are some of the details from his confession, and it's pretty brutal. It's not as gruesome as you thought it might be but pretty much crazy that he punched her in the face like five times and then strangled her to death and dropped her in a puddle to leave her to drown seems pretty remorseless there i mean the kid says he wants to change his life now but he's gonna have a hard time i'm sure he'll be in jail for at least 25 years unless they find something wrong with him that you know he's not mentally fit to stand trial or some shit but i don't think that's gonna be the case i actually just learned that the father made a memorial at the site of the killing and it's pretty nice. I'll show you a little clip of the video now. It's just a place full of life, you know, and in the middle, in the middle of the weeds, uh, a place full of life with sunflowers. Where eight foot weeds once stood, the same ones found in Karina Vitrano's fists as she struggled to escape her killer, now are soaring flowers. A place that once witnessed the darkest hours of her life, now radiates with the light of her soul. An aura almost magical, angelic. She came to a very, very uh, unfortunate and tragic, uh, violent end. And yet this place is so peaceful. This place mm -hmm. is so peaceful. Uh, it's a place of reflection. Uh, it's a sad place. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a beautiful place. For the first time on the anniversary of his beloved parishioner's death, Father Francis Cala Maria visits the memorial Karina's father created. Her father heroically uh, discovered the body, which uh, would only make sense because he also used these weeds. He would run here with her. They would run together. Phil Vitrano found his daughter hours after she was brutally beaten, sexually assaulted, and murdered while jogging alone in Spring Creek Park. Now he returns to this spot every day, and he's not the only one. You can see on this flagstone here that Karina's father put out. He wrote from 1986 to infinity. And Father Kala Maria says that she does live on throughout the community. You can see it through things left here. Tokens of her life in the very spot where she took her last breath. We know that although she has gone, you know, from this place, uh, she lives eternally uh, with God in heaven. A butterfly made of stones gathered from around the park is the centerpiece. Karina loved butterflies. She loved uh, rainbows also. Uh, she loved nature. And she loved running here. Loved After the murder, some in the area called to burn down the weeds, but not Karina's father. This really is a place where they both enjoyed. And a place you can tell by walking in her footsteps. Her soul still runs. From Howard Beach, I'm Michelle Powers. So it's good to see at least the families try and move on in a positive way and, you know, sharing her memory with everyone. And it's very nice there now, uh, surrounded by a bunch of dirty weeds and shit. At least it's like a nice little area that they've carved out. Unfortunately, she had to die to make that happen. And that's the sad part of this. Maybe soon I'll take a trip there and go check it out myself before I make the last installment of what this series seems it will be, even though I didn't know it was going to become a series of videos I made, it has on its own, so I guess that'll be the end of this video. Have a good night, guys.